Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining the Spotsylvania County Parent Resource Center for this session on creating a student profile for your child. I'm Courtney Seeley. I'm the teacher facilitator here at the Parent Resource Center and sadly I will be your only host this evening as my partner Sandy wasn't feeling well. Sandy, we hope you're feeling better soon. She'll be watching this later. So hopefully that makes her smile. All right, this session is being recorded. So during the presentation, please leave your microphones muted so we don't pick up any background noise in the video. Um, however, feel free to leave your comments or post questions in the chat and I'll come back to those later. Thanks. A little bit of information about the PRC before we jump in. Uh, the PRC staff consists of myself, a teacher with 23 years of experience as a special educator and a middle school math teacher and our parent facilitator, Sandy Sprague, who's a mother of three sons with disabilities who all attended and graduated from Spotsylvania County Schools. We work together as a team to model the partnership of families and schools working together. Sarah Bell is our administrative assistant who oversees the PRC library operations, and she is also the early childhood special education registrar. All of our services and resources are provided for free and we serve all families. Um, the PRC is in the Center for Family and Preschool Services building at 7409 Brock Road in the heart of Spotsylvania County in the courthouse area. We share this wonderful space with the program offices of Head Start, the Child Find Office, and the ESOL Welcome Center. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And this summer, our PRC library will also be open Monday through Thursday from 9 to 3. Many of you already know of our library or may have already borrowed some of our hands-on um, learning resources, uh, which target literacy and mathematics for our preschool and elementary learners. We also have a wide variety of resources for parents to check out too. And those include things like books, DVDs, magazines, and brochures on various topics. Um, stop by one day and browse our shelves if you have time. People are always amazed with what we have for them to check out. Many of, uh, many of our patrons tell us that they wish they'd known about the library sooner. Our best advertising is word of mouth, so please spread the word. Most of the time, you'll find Sandy and I working directly with families. Parents and guardians may contact us for a variety of reasons, such as the ones you see here. Uh, we meet with them in person, over the phone, or, or even virtually like this, um, whatever is convenient for them. Many times families are looking for information or linkages to community agencies and have specific questions about topics such as guardianship for children with significant disabilities that are about to turn 18 or how to apply for in-home services through a Medicaid waiver or for um, SSI or supplemental security income. We work very closely with the Office of Student Support Services and help educate families on the special education process as well as assist with um, preparing the families of students with disabilities for post-secondary opportunities for their children after graduation. Uh, whatever brings them to our center, we help parents and guardians educate themselves so that they can be their child's best advocate until such a time that their child hopefully can begin to advocate for themselves. If we're not in our offices assisting families, we're planning or hosting information sessions for families just like this one, often collaborating with the Fredericksburg Area Council on Transition or the other parent resource centers in the greater Fredericksburg area. Uh, we work very closely with Stafford County and Caroline County parent resource centers. You may see us in your child's school during special events, handing out information that may be appropriate for those grade levels or events. Our monthly schedule of sessions can always be found in our monthly newsletter. Your newsletter gets sent to every family in the county at the beginning of each month. So this will come to you from the SCPS public information email address. So keep an eye out for that each month. Um, you can also find all of our monthly newsletters on our website, which is listed here. Uh, links to join virtual meetings or register for our sessions can be found in our newsletter as well. Okay, enough about us. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what is a student profile anyway? Have any of you ever created a profile for your child or sent an email at the beginning of the year to describe some kind of important piece of information that you felt that a teacher or staff member needed to know? As a teacher, I would get contacted a lot at the beginning of the year. And sometimes it was about how to work with the child. Um, sometimes it was about something health related. 
And sometimes it was just to introduce themselves and share a little bit about their kid and what they liked. So I got a few of those, which is great, but it's the one page student profile that I always loved receiving. So a one page profile is just a summary of your child and how to best support them. Uh, profiles are often created by the parent, but the best way to create a robust profile is to include your child's input if possible as well as any feedback from previous teachers or other people who know your child well. Profiles should be positive and strengths-based. Include language that highlights your child's strengths and positive attributes. This information could very well be the first thing that a person sees about your child even before they meet them. So let your child put their best foot forward with this information. And though you wanna be as thorough as possible when sharing information about your child, it is important to keep the profile concise and organized. You want to include as much information as you need to, and for some children that may be more than for other children, but as a general rule of thumb, it's a good idea to try to keep it to one page if you can so a reader can get through the most important information they need to know quickly. Also, as a side note, uh, you're going to see a lot of examples that I'm going to share with you tonight that are profiles of children with special needs. And this is mostly just because we work frequently with families of children with special needs. And these are the examples that we just happen to have on hand and that we share frequently at our center. However, we do encourage all parents to utilize a student profile for their child, especially in the younger grades. Or if there is a specific information that you need a teacher to know about your child, maybe you know your child might want to share themselves. For example, like when they get to middle school and high school, that might be a good time for you to create a profile and, and email that to the teacher. If you have a child with special needs, we encourage you to continue to create profiles of and with your child through the high school years. Um, you'll see an example of this later. So why should you develop a profile for your child? You are painting the big picture or taking a snapshot of your child to share with others. Teachers, school staff, coaches, doctors, therapists. Sandy even gave her son's profile to certain family members that didn't understand how autism affected his behaviors just to help educate them. Hand out your student profile at the beginning of the school year to your child's teacher or teachers. If your child can do this, even better. As a teacher, I always appreciated receiving these profiles at orientation or at the beginning of the year when I was trying to get to know over 100 names and faces all at once. It takes months for a teacher to get to know this level of information about each of their students. One of the most important aspects of being an effective teacher is forming strong, trusting relationships with their students. So positive, person-centered profiles are a very powerful tool to help teachers forge this relationship as soon as possible. And I'm going to share um, an example of why it's so important for teachers and students to forge that bond. I remember one particularly difficult case where we had a seventh grade student who refused to pick up a pencil in his classes, and um, especially in my class because I taught math and he did not like math. Um, he wouldn't complete any assignments. He'd often have his head down on his desk. He would attempt to sleep. Despite our collective efforts between home and school, because we did communicate about this and, and I was looking for help, I just wasn't initially successful in my attempts to make a connection with this child. However, due to a profile that was shared by his family during an IEP meeting, I learned that he had a pit bull named Zeus that he loved more than any. And he took excellent care of it and faithfully walked him every day after school. The next time I saw him, I asked him about his dog. He perked right up and immediately started talking about his dog, Zeus. And I knelt down beside his desk and asked him several questions. And I shared that I had a dog too. And we spoke for a little bit, you know, about how awesome our dogs were. And, and then I just got up and walked away to help other students. And then the next day I stopped by his desk and I said, how Zeus? And we chatted some more. I began to see his wall coming down a bit at a time. And I was using his love for his dog to chip away at it. Eventually, he began to let me work with him on some math problems. I knew he required a calculator at all times during math class as per his accommodations, but his profile mentioned that he was embarrassed to use his accommodations around others. So I asked what would make him feel more comfortable, and he said that he could move to the back of the class. I guess he thought nobody would see him using it if he was sitting in the back. I was hesitant to do this because one of his other accommodations was to uh, be in close proximity to the teacher. And when I explained this, he smiled and just suggested that I move my desk to the back of the class and teach near him. So by the end of the year, he'd poke his head into my class to say goodbye on his way to the bus. And I would always say, you know, say hi to Zeus for me. So that's just a, a very colorful example of 
how the information in a profile can promote that relationship and that bond between a teacher and a student and, and can do very quickly. So something you put in there, you might not think is that important. It could be what helps the teacher really crack the case. Here's an example of how a one pager could be organized. Uh, you'll see a place where you can put a photo of the child, appreciations, admirations, what's important to and for the person and how to support them. This particular one page profile concept was developed by Helen Sanderson and the Learning Community for Person-Centered Practices and is intended to provide you with just a clear example of how sections can quickly organize your information. Not all student profiles necessarily need to have these same sections. Um, you wanna be sure to include information about what's important to your child. If they can, let them give you input so they can share what they'd like their teacher or other adults to know about them, such as the people, important people in their life, their hobbies, favorite subjects, and perhaps things that they would like to avoid. Loud noises, crowded hallway, the kids are gonna be able to share that information with you. All right, what else is important? You may also have other information to share related to their health, like medical conditions, allergies, or a special diet. What about safety? Do you have concerns about the environment? Um, think of the things that your child wouldn't be likely to share. And this is also very helpful. Be specific about those things that work or don't work for your child. So instead of saying, looking at the first example, Jane has difficulty with change or transition. This parent stated what helps her child when dealing with change or a transition by just saying she responds to consistent classroom routines. So you can really note there how it's really worded positively. Um, a quick handwritten schedule of the class activities on a post-it note will help her navigate transitions more easily. So a, a solution to this is also given. Something that worked in the past, maybe in a previous class or something that works at home. Uh, it's great if you have a solution, put that in there. Look at the second example. Instead of saying something like, Jane dislikes working in groups or with others. This parent focused on the specific behavior that she will not find a partner or group on her own when she's being prompted to pair up or find a group and how to best navigate that. Uh, try to offer those solutions that have worked in the past and think of it like this. Do you know how when you're leaving or you've left your child at home with a babysitter, how you'd say, if they do this, try this. Though it may not always work across all settings or for the same people, we know that. That tip is always a good one to pass along, just in case. Always try to offer a solution as a tip. The teachers will definitely appreciate it. Okay, the sections of a student uh, profile, again, are really what you need them to be to accurately paint a picture, a, a, a summary of your child. So include what works best. If your child wants to write a section in their own words, that would be great. If your child has an IEP or a 504, perhaps you could let the teacher know of the accommodations. Please note that all teachers are given a copy of accommodations for students that they teach. Okay, so why include a picture? I showed you that one slide and it had a little spot for a picture. At the beginning of the school year, when I would receive my class list, I was very focused on the number of students I had. Do I have enough desks and chairs and books and copies made for the number of students on my list? Our instruction is driven by data, so that's more numbers to consider. How many students did I have in each block that didn't pass their math as well last year? And how many will need more intensive instruction? How big will my enrichment groups be? Students begin to take shape as individuals once they step foot in my classroom. So from day one, teachers attempt to get to know students and have students get to know each other and foster those uh, relationships. But when parents put a picture in the profile and give it to me before school, it immediately makes that child stand out. It really humanizes that child. They're not just a number in my second block class. They're John. And John has this face. And when he walks through my door, I'm going to know that's John. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that picture just helps teachers connect that information to the student as soon as they step into the classroom. Um, when parents would bring a student profile to an IEP meeting. When I was a special education teacher, I saw a lot more of these types of parent profiles and sometimes the students would bring them to the meeting and hand them out. It helped the team focus on the strengths, uh, what the students' goals were, and other positive aspects of the child before just diving right into the development of the IEP itself. Uh, a picture is also beneficial for those that may not work with your child, like uh, an administrator or a related service provider who only provides consult services to the teacher and not direct services to the child. 
So again, it humanizes your child and is a constant physical reminder of who they are supporting. For students with needs that need to be known by all that work with them, having each teacher slip the profile into a substitute teacher folder will allow a sub to quickly look over what they need to know about your child. And that picture is going to be invaluable there. So if you can include a picture, I would highly recommend it. All right, so besides the most obvious input coming from you, the parent, if appropriate, again, get important input from your child as well, but also get some input from previous teachers. Or if you just remember what your previous teachers were sharing with you, put that in there as well. It's invaluable to communicate their experiences with what worked and what didn't or doesn't. Other people that can be consulted are extended family members, church family, coaches, babysitters, or anyone else that knows your child well, therapist. Um, you'll be surprised what you will learn about your child through the eyes of someone else. And a different perspective is often very important. You will all supply the different colors of paint that will help you paint the big picture. For all of our talk of paint, it's a good idea to type your profile and save it each time you change it. This will make it easier to make small changes as your child grows, rather than having to start from scratch each time you wanna update the profile. At the very least, you'll wanna update your child's profile once a year um, to have a profile ready to hand out at the beginning of the uh, school year. If your child has an IEP, you may also wanna think about looking over the profile and making any updates as needed before the annual IEP. I'm gonna be giving you a packet and it's also going to be posted in the description of the video when this is posted on YouTube. Included in your packet are several different examples of student profiles, some blank templates, and some questionnaires that can help. A profile doesn't have to be a cutesy thing, but an eye-catching and organized profile may catch the reader's attention a bit more, which can't hurt, right? If you are a Spotsylvania County parent, you will also find these housed under the student profile collection on the PRC library destiny page. These resources are designed so that you can print what you think would be most useful to you. If you would like a hard copy of these resources, a copy of all of them, just contact us at the number there on the screen or email us at prc at spotsylvania.k12.va.us. So the first resource I wanna share with you this is one of our favorite resources to share, and it's what we named our presentation after. Uh, this document comes from the Exceptional Children's Assistance Center, and it gives a brief explanation of what a student profile is, and it provides a very thorough template to help you get your information organized. Let's see if I can scroll, my computer's lagging. This document, as you can see, you can write right on this. And if um, you are into typing like I am, then this is just a great profile and it's organized very well. Okay, so the next resource. This template comes from the It's About Me forms. Um, it's a packet from the Center for Family Involvement at VCU. It is a template designed to be filled in by the student or if appropriate from the student's perspective. A link will be provided for you to see the entire packet, which is very helpful for older students with special needs who are providing their own input on their IEPs or 504 plans. Here are some tips and suggestions for your child's profile from the PACER Center. Uh, which they refer to as a student snapshot instead of a profile. It also provides a blank template and an example of a student profile that was created from that template. So you can look at this and, and see exactly how they structured the student profile when you look at the example. So that's kind of nice seeing them together. This guide provided by Cynthia Tobias provides another template also from the student's perspective of how they best learn. Um, it also provides some excellent tips for productive communication with your child's teacher. We don't often talk about communication and how important it is, but that pipeline between school and home and keeping your communications respectful and, and open and really making sure that you're you know, asking them for their opinion and they're asking you for your opinion, that's really important. It really gives the children the benefit that when the teachers and the families are working together. This is a 33 page guide. So I'm not gonna go through all of these. It's a very comprehensive guide by Helen Sanderson and Associates out of the UK. Um, I showed you an example of one of their templates at the very beginning of the presentation. And you'll notice that this guide is written for teachers. So when you're reading through this, it's going to look like, oh, you know, this is for teachers. But the reason I'm giving it to you 
is because there's so much good information in there. The templates that the parents fill out, the children fill out, that the teachers fill out, that other people fill out are all in here and you compile it all and, and put it all into one, uh, one page profile. So um, there are examples of completed student profiles in this document as well. All right, so here are some student profile examples. And just a complete one pager there. I love this one. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about this first one as we move on. I, I love how it's sectioned. It's very clear and concise. This information is a little bit more detailed, which also can be very good. You know, you might need a little bit more detail for some kids. Things he likes, doesn't like, things he struggles with, what to watch for, how to help him, a special note. There's some good stuff in here. This student profile is a little bit lengthier and it's a two page profile, but I love this example. This one is talking about Christopher and they talk about who he is, what are his strengths, what are his successes, what are his greatest challenges? That is something that, um, that Sandy and I use the word challenges. We prefer that over weaknesses. It just has a, a, a more positive connotation to it. What supports are needed? And describe your vision for your child's future, which is also very important. Here's some good things to know about Bob. I won't go through all of this, but this is also a two-pager. You can, when you read through this, when you get the packet, you'll see why there's so much information. And here's a good, I love this. This is a great profile of a student's transition plan. So again, this is going to be more for those children who um, have uh, special needs. A transition plan is something that goes into a child's IEP in Virginia at age 14, and, and they update the transition plan every year. So this student just wanted to do a profile of his transition plan to hand out and just let the teachers know what his goals were, um, where he wanted, where he saw himself in, in the future. And his to-do list is very clear. This particular example is um, Sandy's. This is Sandy's son. This is a real profile that she created for her son, David, when he was 14 years old. And one thing that um, she likes to point out, and so I will do it for her, is you'll notice here under strengths, you see the, the term invisible disabilities and under challenges, invisible disabilities. Sometimes something can be both a strength and a challenge. And she explains this really well. Um, it can be a real strength that people didn't look at David and see Asperger's or the autism level one, how it impacted him. He looked just like anybody else. And so that was a positive. However, on the flip side of that, it could also be a negative because people didn't look at him and see it. So they were, they didn't understand that he needed to have those accommodations for it. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why it was so important for Sandy to create a profile so that everybody who was working with David were informed of his needs. And, and when I say everybody, we're talking everybody. She gave them to everybody in the school, right on down to the people in the cafeteria and even the, um, custodial staff. So this is a very powerful tool that you can give out to everybody. All right, let's go on to a giant list of adjectives, 150 positive adjectives about kids. I'm just sharing this with you because when you're creating a profile and you're really trying to find that word, this is just a, a great way to help you find the perfect wording to stay positive. All right, we talked about how important it was to focus on your students' positive attributes. Here's some more words that can describe your child. Okay, real quick little blurb here for those parents who may be watching this who have a child with um, special needs. You can use your profile to help you with the parent input section. It's important that you realize that you are an important part of the IEP team. Your input should be comprehensive and provide clear descriptions of your child's strengths and challenges, what works, what doesn't and any other additional input that is important for the team to consider when they're developing the IP. You can easily use that student profile to help you complete the input section that you can send to your child's case manager when the IP draft is being completed. Typing it, sending it electronically ensures that the case manager can easily copy and paste your input directly into the document. And if appropriate, your child can also have a voice in the IP by providing their own input. This is also Sandy's parent input that she created for David when he was in middle school, I think. And you'll see that she provided her information 
but also Dana's information. They sat down together and he talked to her about these, all of these things and, and she wrote them down and, and he said, yep, that's what I want to let them know. So this was copied and pasted directly into the IEP. As David got older and he was in high school, the parent information changed. It looked a little different. She decided to split up her input into these categories, academic, vocational, self-advocacy, behavior, independent living abilities, and even a conclusion to kind of tie it all together. That's, that's just another example. And then this is a student um, IEP form that can help your child frame their input in a concise and productive manner if they would like to put their input into the IEP as well. My last resource that I want to share with you is a blog post um, that was written by a parent who provides a beautiful example of her child's student profile. This profile was created using Canva, not Canvas, not the program that our high schools and middle schools use, but Canva, a free web-based graphic design program that allows you to use um, some very eye-catching templates and allows you to add your own information to make a student profile that's really easy to update. If you'd like more information about how to set up a Canva account and use the template, I'm happy to explain how to do so. This particular blog post does a great job going through the steps one at a time on how to do this. You'll see step one, step two, she gives screenshots of what to click on. This was great. I followed this example and you know it says, I provided the template here. If you want a black and white version to help reduce ink wastage, you can click on this one, it's black and white. So when you click here, it's going to take you over to Canva. And that's the template. You can see it doesn't look exactly like her. She left, she left the, the picture there for you to fill in, and then you can change the wording to fit your child. You will need to create a user profile for. It is free, and um, they do have a pro version, but all you need is the free version. And you can play around with Canva. And again, I'll be happy to sit down with you and show you how to use the features a little bit more. And the blog post tells you all of this. It's very easy to use. So you can see how I can move things around. I can resize things. If I want more room to write, if I want to make my, my boxes bigger, I can do that. If I want to make my font smaller so I have more room to write more information, this is just a really nice way to put it together and keep it organized. And I say this because if you've ever tried to type in two columns in Word and rearrange things and move things, it can be very frustrating. This is very simple and very user-friendly. Um, the nice thing about Canva, uh, see up here, this is the copy of the one that she has shared with you. So all you have to do is save this. I'll save this as Sealy, and this is my fourth grade profile. And then the next year, when I want to update it, or if I want to update it mid-year or whatever, or if I want to make another one for a different setting, I can open this up and I can make a copy. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to keep my fourth grade profile. I don't want to type over it. It's so neat to be able to see the fourth grade one, the fifth grade, the sixth grade, seventh grade. Um, so when I click on the copy of Sealy fourth grade, now I can start editing this one. So I'm going to go back here. We talked a little bit about the packet. You can access this presentation and all of the resources shared this evening by clicking on this link. If you are on a device where it's difficult for you to click on the link, you should be able to just type this in. Just go to tinyurl.com backslash student profile helpful links and this will open up. All right, so these are all of those forms that I promised that you were going to see. If you come down here, and click on student profile Google Slides, you'll get a copy of the entire presentation that I'm showing you right now. All right, if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay caught up with all of our sessions and events. Thank you for joining me this evening for this presentation on creating a student profile. We hope you find this information useful and helpful. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here and welcome any questions. Feel free to unmute or put them in the chat.